Hey there, happy Tuesday. I hope you are all doing really well today. I hope you are enjoying your day and I hope you maybe got some rest last night. Today we are going to be talking about sleep. And so if you did not get a good night's sleep last night, or if you were tossing and turning, maybe didn't get enough sleep, this might be a really good episode for you. And I really hope that you glean some little tips that you can begin implementing right away. So you might want a notebook for this one to jot down some notes. And before we get to it, I wanted just to share with you a wonderful Christian organization that I have aligned with now that God has just really opened the door for me to be able to participate in. I'm super excited, really honored and humbled, to be honest, um, that this is even happening, that God has even opened the door for me to do this. But I'm also super excited because Soul Win TV, it is the very first Christian domestic violence and anti-abuse against women and children network that is completely for Christian women, by Christian women, and it is really dedicated to the restoration of all survivors around the world. So it's just a really great safe place for women to go that will be getting encouragement from God's word and other women all around the world. And we could all use some really amazing encouragement, especially now. So I just am super excited about this organization. So I encourage you to check out soulwin.tv for all the information and I feel sure that you will love the network as well. I mean, we've just got so much going through our minds, so much that is coming from social media and the TV and other outlets that is really negative or it's derogatory or it's just depressing. So this is super exciting that we can have a place to go that is going to be uplifting and building us up and rooted in God's word. So check out soulwind.tv. And the next thing I wanted to mention is because this episode is talking about sleep and just struggling to either fall asleep or stay asleep, especially if you are a woman over 40, sleep tends to get a little bit more difficult, doesn't it? Well, I wanted to mention that I do have that foggy and fatigued blueprint. It is that free resource for you to be able to download it right away, get it in your inbox, and you can start implementing those action steps immediately. So check that out, my foggy and fatigue blueprint. Go to treasuredwellness.com and you will be able to download that right away. All right, go ahead and grab your notebook, maybe grab a glass of iced tea, and let's get started with today's show. Are you a Christian midlifer who has been searching for answers on how to just feel better? Are you experiencing mental and physical fatigue, ongoing pain, and trouble sleeping? Or lately, have you been Googling brain fog and weight gain? Boy, do I understand all of that. Listen, friend, I want you to know that there is freedom in your whole health, and it's not worldly freedom either. In this podcast, there is biblical freedom for you through holistic health solutions and godly support, which will then transform your mind, body, soul, and spirit, and help you find this freedom at midlife. Hi, I'm Michelle McCoy, and as a holistic and functional health coach, I have realized the answer is in partnering your faith with holistic solutions and a heck of a lot of discipline, intentionality, and commitment to changing your life at midlife. So are you ready to feel better in this new season of life? If so, I will be right here each Tuesday and Friday to help you along. If you're ready for breakthrough action and restoration, it's time to treasure your wellness. Okay, so you're over 40, you're struggling with sleeping, either you're not falling asleep very easily, it's taking you a really long time to fall asleep, or you are waking up at the same time every single night, unable to fall back asleep for an hour or more. What is going on, right? And how can you get control over your sleep issues? Well, I want to share three specific things to you that you can do right now, that you can do starting tonight to help you sleep better. 
And the very first thing that I want to talk about is I want you to consider meditating on God's word. Often we run through our busy day and we kind of take time to check out watching Netflix or TV shows or scrolling and that is really not helping your brain to slow down and to get into that state of rest and it really does keep your brain on high alert. So, I mean, especially looking at the screens, looking at that TV screen, the computer screen, even your cell phone, you've got that constant blue light and studies have shown that it really does keep our brains alert. So what we want to do is we want to calm our brain down, we want to slow it down, we want to set up a calming environment so that we can sleep. And the first way we do that is let's just get back into God's word. Meditate on God's word. Think about what he is saying to you with what you're reading. Think about it. Ponder it. Meditate on it. Well, I have seven scripture references that you can go to to really just help you with this step. Jot down these verses and I'm going to go ahead and read them as well. The first one is Psalm 4, 8. It says, I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, Lord, make me live in safety. Okay, so it's both lying down and sleeping. Not just lying down and tossing and turning and being full of anxiety and and full of stress and worry and fear. But no, lying down and sleeping in peace. So that is very comforting, isn't it? And that just reminded me of Psalm 3, 5. It says, I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. So again, that's the second verse that is saying, I will lie down and sleep. So it's not just, again, tossing and turning. No, it's actually getting that restorative sleep that we need. So that was Psalm 3, 5 and Psalm 4, 8. I wasn't planning on reading Psalm 3, 5. But it reminded me when I read Psalm 4, 8 that there was another verse that I had often gone to when I was really struggling with my sleep. Okay, and then Psalm 16. Psalm 16, verses 7 and 8 says, I will bless the Lord who counsels me, even at night when my thoughts trouble me. I always let the Lord guide me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My body also rests securely. That was Psalm 16, 7 through 9. And then, of course, I love Psalm 23. It's just very peaceful. It's very calming. And it's a really good passage to memorize so that when you do close your eyes and you are struggling to fall asleep, you can just replay this in your mind meditate on the words in this chapter and i'm reading from the christian standard bible version it says the lord is my shepherd i have what i need he lets me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside quiet waters he renews my life he leads me along the right paths for his name's sake Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. It's just very calming. I love it. Okay, and then Psalm 56, and if you don't have a notebook or if you're driving, I will have all of these scripture references in the show notes so you'll be able to grab them. But Psalm 56, verses 3 and 4 says, When I am afraid, I will trust in you, in God whose word I praise. In God I trust, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? And I put that in there because often when we lay down, we get that record player in our mind 
of things we're worried about, concerned about, anxious about, maybe fearful about. And that's a great time for the enemy to really get into our mind. And so I put that verse in there for us to just be reminded, really, that this verse is just confirming what the New Testament says, that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. So we don't have to be afraid. We can completely trust in God and in his word over us. And then the other verses that I'm not going to read are Psalm 62. I would read verses 1 and 2, and then I would jump ahead to verses 5, 6, 7, and 8 for some encouragement. And then, of course, I love Psalm 91. Oh my gosh. It is just such a beautiful picture of God's love over his children. So read Psalm 91. And honestly, if you are really going through some serious sleep deprivation or some anxiety and worry and fear, I would read Psalm 91 every single night before you fall asleep. I would read it every night and I would read it every single morning. So add this to your morning routine if you are struggling, but definitely read it before you go to bed. And I would read it out loud. I believe that there is power in reading God's word out loud because Satan can't hear our thoughts. And it just reinforces the power that we have with the Holy Spirit living inside of us when we read it out loud. It just helps us to feel stronger and more in control. And that's not something that I ever really understood before the last few years, but it really is true. It just kind of boosts your confidence that you are a child of God and God's word is true and it will never return void. So read Psalm 91 out loud every night before you go to bed. So Psalm 91 is just such a beautiful picture of God's love over us. I gave you all those verses so that you will be able to really breathe in to what God says to you and meditate on that. Take a verse, take a word from the verse and just think about that and just let that kind of marinate in your mind. Now, meditation, that is something I struggle with personally. I'm not really good at it. My mind keeps darting off in different directions, but I am getting better because the more I practice, the better I am able to stay focused. And honestly, asking the Holy Spirit to help you to stay focused as you try to meditate on God's word, he will do that. He will help you to stay focused, but it takes action, right? It takes that intentionality of us trying to bring our thoughts back to that word you know we're supposed to take every thought captive so bringing our thoughts back so it's a process I have by no means mastered it (laughs) I'm very much in awe of people that can meditate for lengths of time on God's word it just is pretty amazing to me but just continuing to practice and you know practice makes progress So that's number one, meditate on God's word. And number two is you want to make a calming space that is really conducive to sleep. So when you go in your room and you shut the door, first, you don't want to go back out after you go in your room to shut the door. If at all possible, you want to be able to just go in your room and that's it, an hour before you're ready to go to sleep. And that way you can create that calming, restful place where your body is slowing down and it's getting the signals that it's time for sleep. So that begins with turning your lights down low. You don't wanna have the lights on bright and keeping you alert. So low lighting, get rid of all electronics, no electronics, no cell phone, no dings, no pings, no checking emails, no watching TV, no scrolling, no nothing. I know that people are like, well, I have my Bible on my phone. Well. I challenge you to go back to your Bible. If that's what you've been doing lately is reading your Bible on your phone, even though that's good. And I have a devotion app that's on my phone, so I get it because I was doing that. I was doing a devotion in the morning and then again at night, but really it does keep our brain on alert. So I have really tried to do that less and less. Again, progress, not perfection, right? But when I just get into God's word, I just open up the Bible and maybe you pick a book of the Bible that you want to really dig down into, that's a good way to do it. Or just pulling up these specific verses that I mentioned. But regardless, if you are reading a book or a Bible, you want to be reading it in the actual book, not on a device. The other thing you can do is take a nice bath or a shower and then afterwards just rub some lotion on your feet, give yourself a little foot massage, 
really take some time to give yourself a little TLC. If you have essential oils by your bed, that's a great way to kind of set the stage for calming, get that diffuser going, and get those essential oils. It really just helps to kind of bring a little bit of calmness and peace to the environment. So some of the really good essential oils that are really helpful for relaxing, of course, lavender is the Mac Daddy, the gold star for helping you relax. But you, you also have chamomile, you've got bergamot, Lemon balm is so refreshing. You've got sandalwood, valerian. You've got blends that you can make. I mean, you definitely have some options for sure. But I do have to give you my essential oil disclaimer. You really want to make sure that you are not getting essential oils from just anywhere. You want to be getting them from a reputable company where they are 100% organic, pure, therapeutic grade essential oils. Because one of the other things that you can do when you have really pure oils is you can put them in your hands, put a few drops in your hands, rub your hands together, and then do some deep breathing exercises while you are inhaling the oils. That's a great way to help you decompress and it just lowers that nervous system response. So it's a really good way to do that. You can put some essential oil on your pillow that helps you to relax too when you lay your head down. But you also can take in a mug of herbal tea that has herbs that help you to relax and help you to fall asleep. So you wanna look for herbal teas that are containing like lemon balm and chamomile, maybe some valerian root, passion flower. Now, some valerian root can definitely make you sleepy, so you wanna be careful. And of course, everything that I am suggesting, you want to make sure that it's right for you. Only you know what supplements you're taking or what medications you're taking. So if you are unsure, always talk with your doctor, especially if you are taking medication. And then number three, Supplement support. You might need to add some supplements. If you are really struggling, then you want to be able to have some options that help you to fall asleep, but then you also wanna have some options if you're waking up through the night. So again, these are just suggestions you can look at, see if they are right for you, talk with your doctor, but you can think about implementing some of these supplements just to help promote sleep, help you relax better at night. So the following seven supplements are ones that you can check out and just really see if that is something that will work for you, will help you. Again, talking with your doctor, having that conversation with your doctor. But number one is magnesium. Magnesium is very much, I believe, underappreciated. Like magnesium is essential And it helps with things like restless leg syndrome, not being able to sleep, not being able to use the bathroom. I mean, it helps with so many different things, muscle cramps, muscle tension, headaches, migraines. So if you are someone that really struggles with any of those that I mentioned, magnesium might be a good fit. Now there are different forms of magnesium, so it's important that you are getting the right one. And for sleep specifically, magnesium glycinate is one that I recommend because that does help with sleep. And you wanna be taking your magnesium glycinate at night, at bedtime, or even dinner time is okay if you struggle to remember to take any pills or supplements before you go to bed you can take it at dinner and it needs to build up into your system so this isn't something any of these supplements that i'm going to recommend it's not something that you just take once and it's a quick fix it's not a sleep aid it's not going to knock you out it's more natural so it's going to take time to build up into your system so magnesium and then the second one is 5-HTP, that really helps with calming down the nervous system. Really helpful if you struggle with any anxiety or depression. And then you have melatonin, of course. Melatonin is probably the most popular supplement that people take. But I will say that with melatonin, you really do need to be careful or your body will become dependent on it. What happens is if we take melatonin for too long, our body naturally stops producing melatonin. And that's not good because we don't want our body to get lazy and stop producing it. So you need to be careful 
start with low doses, maybe cycle on and off every four to six weeks or so, so that you're not forming a habit of staying on melatonin and then your body's like, okay, I don't need it. I don't need to make it anymore because she's giving it to me every day. So the fourth one is L-theanine. That also helps with calming the nervous system, helping you to relax. If you are struggling with anxiety, depression, sleeplessness, it does help with that. And then GABA, G-A-B-A, again, same thing. And then there's CBD oil, which different strengths and everything, you can play around with that and see what you think. Um, Again, you want to make sure you're getting it from a reputable company, not just one of these places that throw up a shop and they've got CBD oil and you just go and you grab it. You want to make sure that you're getting from a reputable company. And then the last one is specific adaptogenic herbs like ashwagandha, holy basil, rhodiola. So those are some adaptogenic herbs that really help with that nervous system response, help you if you are struggling with a lot of anxiety and you feel like you are in a maybe a fight or flight stress mode often or maybe all the time, this can really help to support your body to adapt to the stressful situation. It gives your adrenals a nice little boost of support. So those adaptogenic herbs, again, like ashwagandha, holy basil, rhodiola. So those are some supplements that you can try. And I do have an online supplement dispensary that you are welcome to go on there, check it out, purchase what you want. I do make a small amount off of your order, but what's really awesome about Fullscript is it has such an amazing dispensary of so many different brands that are reputable that you can just kind of read through the ingredients, get some ideas, you can get some of my recommendations that are on there. So three things that you can do right now, starting tonight to help you sleep better. Number one, meditate on God's word. Number two, make a calming space that is conducive to sleep. And number three, consider supplement support. So maybe your action step for this week is to commit to reading each night one of these verses or chapters that I mentioned right before turning out the light. Just start with that. Just that one simple thing. And then maybe you take some time this weekend to maybe create that calming space for yourself. I know for me, if I have a really messy dresser or the bedroom is messy, it kind of is stressful when I go in there and I wanna go to sleep and then I'm thinking about how I really should be cleaning this up. So trying to keep that space free of clutter and just free of mess can really go a long way to helping us relax in the evening. And actually that is something that I need to work on this weekend for sure because my dresser has gotten a little bit too cluttered for my liking. So I am committing right there with you, I am going to commit to creating a better conducive place for sleep, a more relaxing space in my own bedroom. Okay, and as I close out in prayer, I just invite you to pray along with me these words. Father God, help me to seek you each time I lay my head down. Speak your words of peace over me so that I can rest calmly and confidently and just know that you are with me. Because your word says that you will never leave me nor forsake me. So I am trusting in you and trusting in that truth tonight. As I give you all of my worries, all of my anxieties, all of my fears. God, I thank you that your word says I can lie down and sleep in peace for my life is protected. Bring me sweet sleep tonight, I pray, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, my friend, I hope today's episode blessed you, and I pray it challenged you and gave you some good encouragement. If it did, would you please just take 30 seconds today to share it with somebody else and also leave me a five-star review on Apple because this is the only way for me to know that you really are finding value in the show. Also, if you would love to be part of my Facebook community, I would love to have you. The link will be in the show notes and I would love to see you there. Okay, keep showing up consistently for yourself and for God and allow him to work in you and through you. Remember, you are a beautiful treasure. See you Friday.